To have a dripping irrigation system, water source is required. For that, I created a new, dedicated source using PEX tubing and manifold, why not, which you will see shortly. To mount it on the wall, I used pine boards and left a gap after each board for the next one to slide into it, something but not quite as a tongue and groove, as the wood expands and contracts. I went with PEX since it's easy and fast to work with compared to copper. Let me give you a little background. With PEX, there are different types and brands. I went with a brand called Upanor, since unlike other brands, it's offering true and constant diameter throughout the entire installation line. For example, other brands sell some X diameter inch pipe, but the adapter that connects two of those pipes is smaller and results in lower water pressure at the destination. You can think about it as a busy road which has six lanes that are merged into five and then back to six, but unlike cars, water will not accelerate once its speed got decreased. Upanor, on the other hand, is using different technology, which maintains the interior adapter diameter to be exactly the same as the pipe. Another benefit of PEX compared to copper is that it's flexible and can have loops at corners rather than 90 degree adapter which decreases water pressure. That being said, I had to use the 90 degree adapter at some points. As a tip, when the pipe is too short in length, expand both sides before inserting the adapter, as it will crack it. In this case, despite the crack, I had no leaks using it for a year. I still need a connection from the main water valve to the manifold. I created this T intersection to have a new dedicated PEX pipe path. I'm closing the main water valve so I will be able to install the new T piece. If you're interested in seeing how I originally installed the main water valve, check out the Rodan subfloor and main water valve replacement video on my channel. I opened back slowly the main water valve and made sure that there are no leaks. Now I can continue working on the PEX dedicated path. Okay, now that the rest of the house has water, I can continue working and replace the copper pipe going into the water heater with the PEX. Per code, PEX can be connected directly to the water heater, and that's why I used an 18-inch corrugated hose water heater connector. This is how it looks like under the house, in the crawling space. I ran the line and added the security tab before it exits the house, so it will be easier to replace the exterior section if anything will ever go wrong. Now let me show you how I ran the exterior line.
I use the smaller in diameter connector at the edge to cover the hole. I connected it after pushing the pipe in place. Now that the hole is sealed, it's time to create a concrete base. It will eventually hold the new post with the tap. I'm going to use some stones to hold everything in place and if you do it on your own make sure everything is leveled. To prevent the concrete from gluing to the wood, I used vegetable oil. If you do it on your own, make sure you have some scrap wood clamped at the exit. Without it, this section will split the wood there. Now that the base is complete, it's time to wire the blue packs into the white PVC. If you wonder why I used PVC when I could have just ran the blue packs and be over with it, it's a protective barrier. In case that someone will dig at that spot in the future, for example, this might prevent from damaging the packs.
I waited for almost a year before releasing this video. Before the winter, I shut off the valve leading to this post and made sure that the PEX is really freeze resistant, which it is. Now I will share the problems I faced and continue to the irrigation installation. After one winter, I noticed that this side is leaking, called Amazon, got a replacement. So this is the PEX. Then I have another piece of metal which converts the male to female or female to male. This is so water coming, trapped water will not go into the house. So it's kind of a blocker here. The water can go only one way. This is the thing that died after one winter. Or I think so. This is the cable to the main hose. And here we have this Home Depot little piece that converts to any angle. It doesn't stay in place, but I don't need it to stay. And then we have this pipe and the timer. And finally, these two connections. If you do it on your own, copy the same design and save some time because it took me a while to figure it out. My wife did most of the job. The main hose connects, then we have some intersections to the other raising beds, and inside we have those smaller tubes with smaller holes in them. From which the water will drip. My wife spaced them equally. The ends having some kind of stopper and they are connected to the main pipe with those little connectors. Seems like everything is leak proof And this end also has some kind of stopper or extension in the future. To cut it, I'm using PEX cutters. To connect it, I'm just pushing it in. And closing the connection. That's it. Now let's see how much cable I need. Stopper. I've spaced them equally, exactly like in the first one. and stoppers at the very end. Just push them. Stoppers at the end. Stopper at the end. Some valve. A 
if it's too fast just stop the video Beautiful! I will put links to the entire system, including the raising beds, in the description for your convenience. Time taken, around 5 days. Cost without the tools, around 2 grand. Cost with the tools, around 6,000. Thanks for watching.